Aloha. Aloha. I want to start by appreciating PSG and the leadership of Mark Razon last year for writing letters to De Governor David Ige requesting that he sign regulations that the Division of Boating and Harbors had which would prohibit the abandonment and feeding of animals, particularly feral cats, Yay. at our harbors. Governor Ige let it sit on his desk until he got reelected. And then one of the first things that he did after he came into office for the second season was to sign that legislation. Yay. So thanks for your efforts and anybody who contributed to that. We are talking about cats, and it's not a new issue. Over a century of the issue, you can see Edward Howe Forbush, Massachusetts Board of Agriculture, the domestic cat, bird killer, mouser, and destroyer of wildlife. These are just selections of literature. I mean, you can go out there and you could fill in between every year in here. ICUN, cats are responsible for helping to drive 33 species of birds, mammals, and reptiles to extinction on islands. 2011, David Duffy and Paula Capice. Available evidence clearly shows that essentially all TNRs, everybody know what TNR is? Trap, neuter, release, trap, neuter, return, whatever they want to call it, they don't work. They fail to substantially, substantially reduce population size of cats. 2013, Smithsonian, Peter Mara. One pet cat kills one to 34 birds a year, a feral cat kills 23 to 46 birds a year. Oh. This is from Maui. I polled 14 organizations. This is 2018 costs, over a half a million dollars each year. That's replicated every year. I've been running this pro project. We are a project of the University of Hawaii Pacific Cooperative Studies Unit. We work real closely with the Division of Forestry and Wildlife, and every year my budget has to include money to do this work. It's a crime. So in 2011, or no, that's, yeah, 2011 it started out, this study was, was published in 2014. It was an attempt to get stakeholders together. Cheryl Lohr, Chris Lepchek, and company, they all brought it together. And, Everybody kind of agreed that the goal is to reduce the abundance of feral cats. The stakeholders came up with decision criteria. What's the best way? We want to minimize animal or <clears throat> minimize effect of yes, minimize the non-target impacts, both native species and introduced. We want to maximize effectiveness. We want to minim minimize risk to human health and safety. Minimize cost minimize risk to environmental contaminants, and maximize animal welfare. So they came up with management alternatives, live capture and adoption, live capture lethal injection, live capture gunshot, trap neuter release, lethal trap, predator proof fence, and sharpshooters. These were the people who were surveyed. All these groups were people that have had interactions with wildlife over the years. And the most effective thing that all of these people who had interacted, there were 5,400 of them, came up with was lethal trapping. The least effective was trap, neuter, and release. And 84% of the survey respondents said they wanted to see feral cat abundance reduced. Another effort to get cat wildlife people together so the Cat Wildlife Coalition got together. You can see there's a numerically balanced group of respondents there. These people met. They discussed alternatives. And there were some positive things that came out of this. There was some legislation that would have been disastrous for wildlife that the cat people finally agreed not to back. But when they polled 150 rural respondents out of that group, cat caregivers, and they said, are, <clears throat> are you concerned with your cats negatively interacting with wildlife in your colony? Fewer than 1% were very concerned. 
54 were not concerned, 29% were very concern, unconcerned. So 83% of cat care givers place little to no value on wildlife. Toxoplasmosis, Toxoplasma gondii. It's a single cellular organism and there's plenty of research, just two, with rats. Ubiquitous parasite subtly alters the brain of its intermediate host to enhance predation rate whilst leaving other behavioral categories and general health intact. According to the manipulation hypothesis, a parasite may alter the behavior of its host for its own benefit, usually by enhancing its transmission rate. Rats like with toxo, they like cat urine. They go to where it is. They don't run away from cats. And then plenty of studies, many of them out of Czechoslovakia, where it's showing influences on human behavior. Results obtained during the past 15 years strongly suggest that latent toxoplasmosis influences the behavior not only of rodent hosts, but also of humans. Neurophysiological mechanisms and practical effect of these behavioral changes are still to be elucidated. So the Maui, I can only speak to that. I don't know about the rest of the state where it went on following the meetings with stakeholders, no solutions identified. Cat caregivers refuse to meet with wildlife advocates after a while. They give labels like Dr. Death. And what is it that's actually dying mostly? It's our wildlife. The Cat Wildlife Coalition quietly disappeared and feral cats are still killing our birds. Over a half a million dollars a year we're spending and that doesn't take care of the problem. On Maui, our Humane Society, supported by our tax dollars, is trying to relabel feral cats as community cats. I strongly suggest if anybody hears that you reject that label. These are feral animals. They do not belong on our landscapes. And not only that, they put the responsibility totally on the residents. They expect you to provide prevention for cats coming on your property by expensive sprinkler systems that are triggered by motion of cats crossing them. And remember what Duffy and Capice listed, all those studies, all TNR programs fail to eliminate or substantially reduce population sizes of cats. What are we to do? Go back. So here's another story, 2006, Fern Duval and I went to the island of Lanai where the question was, are there any Hawaiian petrels? And we got there, this little map shows all these areas here, the little circles are where we did surveys, nighttime. And we determined that there's the second largest population of Hawaiian petrels in the world on Lanai. And what else did we find? We found predated birds, we found cat scat with bird feathers inside. So we started trapping. We met Christine Costales on the island and she went from working for Castle and Cook to coming to work with us. And we got to know the people on Lanai. We'd go to the coffee shop and we'd eat there, drink coffee, learn to those people. And Castle and Cook then decided they wanted to put a wind energy facility up here in what is the game management area. So they put meteorological towers up. In order to do that, they had to do a habitat conservation plan, come up with mitigation, because now we know that there's Hawaiian petrels and we also had Newell shearwaters that we heard flying in there. And then this is a wastewater treatment plant for Lanai City. And there's Hawaiian stilts and coots, and there's also bats in the area. So Castle and Cook came up with a conservation or a habitat conservation plan. And Gary was the attorney for there, and Gary and I had numerous conversations. And I met with Christine, a woman named Kathy Carroll, in the coffee shop. And Kathy is a cat person, and she'd been trying to get Castle and Cook to give them land to build an enclosure where they could put feral cats. There were feral cats all over Lanai City. And after several times discussing with Gary, he agreed. He said, yeah, let's try it. 
So they did. Kessel and Cook gave them land. And they built, this was their original enclosure. It's now been kind of rebuilt. This is Kathy. She's a cat lover. She's very concerned about the animals. And actually, you know, we're concerned about them too. Cats are much healthier if they're not on the landscape, if they're kept indoors. Go to the American Bird Conservancy Cats Indoors page on their website. There's lots of good information there. And today, there is the Lanai Cats Sanctuary. There's their address. They get almost all of their support from tourists. They don't get much at all support from any government. They have over 600 cats there. They spay them, they neuter them, they have a veterinarian who visits regularly. These cats don't look like feral cats. They're not mangy and grungy. They have kids who come in and they have just people who love cats and it's all within a fence. They trap around the outside to catch cats that are there. They're being very successful and there aren't feral cats running around Lanai City. Grant Sizemore, you can read what he has to say, American Bird Conservancy. And Keone Vaughn, who's the executive director, states that it costs you $1,000 a year to own a cat. They get by for a little less than that, but basically they're raising $600,000 a year to keep parts of Lanai cat free. And that won't solve the whole problem. And it requires us to not say, roll our eyes and go, oh, this will never happen. It's happened in New Zealand. It's happening in Australia. Both PAP has been approved there. We need a landscape level toxicant for cats. Otherwise, we're going to have to keep spending all that money, and it isn't going to work because we can't catch all those cats. So Harmony will be happy, healthy cats indoors, predator-free seabird colonies, and no taxpayer or grant funds going for feral cat control. Thank you. I guess there's time for a question. Exactly. Pet food companies are subsidizing large amounts of money to these quote, community cat organizations, feral cat organizations, um, and really exploiting, I think, the, the sentiments of people who don't believe any cat should ever be humanized, um, and, and, and inflaming them. Um, and many, and many of those people, ultimately, um, if you follow the, the PETA guidelines, the PETA announcements, every single year, every single week, often more than several times a week, there's some organization that's busted for, for, for being a rescue organization and collecting cats or dogs and then allowing them to starve, allowing them to be horribly mistreated and malnourished. Because it's really a hoarding issue, it's a hoarding problem. But I, was, I, I, I know a New York Times journalist who is now doing an expose of illegal fishing around the world, and I, I have encouraged him to connect that to the feral cat problem here, because illegal fishing fish goes into cat food, the cat food organizations then send donations out to communities all across the country and say, yeah, you, we're going to encourage you. We, they encourage them to lobby and they have a great uh, network. So as soon as somebody like Governor Ige says, I might sign this thing, they blast him with death threats. They, death, they blast him with all kinds of aggressive action that you know is not based just on love for pity. Yep. But follow the money. Thank you.